Normally in mid-September, Tri-City Community Television brings you coverage of hometown Terry Fox run in Pop Goodland. This year, however, we felt it's more important to bring you coverage of the following vigil that was held for Mesht Amini, a young Iranian woman who recently died while in the custody of the morality police in Iran for wearing hijab incorrectly. stop abuse against women in Iran. That's why we are here. That's enough. My sister, my daughters, all my mother, all 50% of population of Iran are women and they are under pressure, under abuse. Stop it. Stop abuse against women. Yes, That accident, murder, I don't know what to say. A representative of the Iranian girls, Iranian woman, a community that more than 40 years were under the pressure. Today we are here for the fair that killed in Republic Jumhuri, Republic Islamic. I'm so nervous, sorry about that. All of us remember the, the Gasht, all of us remember the patrol, and all of us remember the police. I'm here to show that. It's a stop. Please, stop. Stop. We are under the pressure. Please, all of the world, listen to our voice. I am the woman here, but my heart is in my home country. The Iranian girls are under pressure. It doesn't matter in Saqqas, in Sanandaj, in Esfahan, in Tehran. All of the world Iranian women are under the pressure. Mahsa is the girl that they arrested by police just for the illegal, illegal of the hair on top of the hijab. They kill her. They beat on her head many times and after she went to the hospital. They start to stop the internet. They again start to hide the reality. We are here to show that the what's the reality. Please be voice of the master and all of the master. Today is the time. Please, please, please. I ask for all of you, all of you, please, Share in English, in Instagram, in WhatsApp, anywhere. Show that. Show that what's happening in our home country. Here is my scarf. I remember this scarf when the police arrested me. I attended a scarf in front of the Dalgah Islami, the court. I remember Jay. I remember many, many bad things. Today, the start my trouble. I'm representative of Iranian ladies. Members of the Iranian community who were brave enough to come out to show their support also voiced their concern that while living here in Canada, they have to live in fear of other Iranian immigrants that live here, but still work on behalf of the power that be in Iran. Mayor Stewart is here. Hi. Hi. Welcome. Yeah, Thanks for your support. Uh, Before you come here, they had a question. I said, well, you will ask uh, Richard. And that is, 
murder of these people, these girls, similar to these people. They are coming to Canada, they are coming to West Vancouver, they are coming to North Vancouver, they are coming to Coquitlam, and spending money, buying a big house, uh, you know. What you are going to prevent those dirty money coming to Coquitlam? Please let me know. Why is government of Iran and then here? We came as from Iran to here to have a better life, not seeing them, and makes Iran better places. But when I'm just asking for all politicians, why their Iranian government coming here with the loads of money, laundry money from Iranian people, and none of them, none of them accountable for why they're here. We are not getting answer from any governments, any political, you know, things whatsoever. We need to answer from all of them. All of them. I know we are. The, the question maybe is a little bit harsh to begin because you don't want to accuse anybody or make yeah. anybody wrong or right. But they're saying it because all those people with the money who are here are the people who are violating human rights in Iran, specifically women. That's why we are upset that they are coming here living freely, lavishly. Their daughters and women are just without hijab and putting, you can see, you guys, because they're speaking Farsi, you don't see them. Yeah. They, they expose themselves in bikinis and private boats or so, where Iran, women in Iran, this Mahsa has been beaten to death because her hair was out and it was highlights in it. That's why people are upset and they need your support. And these people, they're danger for our economy. They're danger for our kids who are growing here because they can kill even though here. No problem. We need to. Thank you so much. Um, and I thank you for that question and the passion behind it. Uh, my name is Richard Stewart. I'm the mayor of Coquitlam. Uh, that's my offices. Uh, as you may know, um, there are three levels of government in Canada. The federal government that is responsible for immigration and for the border controls. The provincial government that is mostly health care, education, and, and highways. And local government that is mostly parks and police and fire and those sorts of things. So I don't get to control who comes to Canada. That is the federal government, and it is an important question that we have to ask the federal government. We seem to prevent so many good people, or delay, or make enormous processes for so many good people to come here. We, the Iranian community in my community here in Coquitlam is one of our most important, and I truly thank you all for being here for joining our community and for sharing your culture and, your, and all of the wonderful things to make Canada a better place, to make Coquitlam a better place. I thank you for that. There are challenges in, I, I, I don't get any involvement at all. I don't, I'm not allowed to be at all involved in federal immigration. But those questions need to be asked. I hear, I've heard from many residents about that issue about how come that some people can come here who are, are who cause harm, who cause harm in their home country, and who come here to cause harm. And that's wrong. So I stand with you today, and I know that my council does. I know that the citizens of Coquitlam stand with you here today. This atrocity is is, is just disgusting. It's a tragedy, and it that kind of thing needs to be. We need to stand up, everybody in the world, to this. Two and a half years ago, the crowd that gathered in this same place gathered for those we lost in a in a plane. Another tragedy. How we lost it? How did we, that happen? What happened? How we lost that people? How oh, we absolutely. And I, I, how did? How I did? Because 
just important. It was a tragedy, but it was a crime. It was not tragedy. It was a tragedy plus a crime. I mean, don't, don't, it was an accident. They shot there. They shot the plane. I deliberately didn't call Yes, it an and you're right. See, the thing is, it's a federal issue. That's true. But as a mayor, would you write a letter to the federal government to say, these are what the people of my people city. Iranian in Kokolom asking because Absolutely. if I write it, they Absolutely. don't listen to yes, me. But if you write it, they listen to you. Please do that. Please. You as the mayor should have the responsibility not to let dirty money to come to Kokolom. Uh, well, I can't. Yes, yeah, you I, have responsibility, uh, and they're actually, coming here. I actually can't prevent people from coming to Kokolom. The federal government can prevent people from coming to Canada. You can write a letter. And I, can, I will write a letter once again, as we have in the past. Because Mayor, Mr. Speaker, is writing a letter to federal government to say we are disappointed. We don't need money coming to Kukalo. Absolutely. So, money. It's about the murder. Excuse me. Nobody wants to come here. Excuse me. Many years ago, one writer named Zahra Kazemi went to Iran and killed by the government. Mr. Harper just closed the embassy of Iranian Iran, yeah. in Ottawa, and from there we don't have any embassy. But Mr. Trudeau came very good in first for the uh, uh, Ukraine airplane, but after that, nothing happened. We didn't see anything. And Mr. Trudeau just bring the money to Vancouver, everybody welcome, from Iran, from China, from Hong Kong, just bring the money, that's it. You can just come. And have a very good no. and, yeah. and it is a fundamental issue. It's not gotten to do with any of prime ministers, but I think, as you said, it's federal as level. As I know. Federal, but we can have we can have a voice, and we need to have a voice. When, and I'm so glad to see you gathered here today, and I gather with you because absolutely, we need the federal government to understand that these people, our people, all of Coquitlam, all of British Columbia, all of Canada, wants us to protect our country from those kinds of dirty yeah. money that comes yes. from us. I don't want it here in Coquitlam, and I wish I could stop it myself, but I can't. But the federal government can do it and has to do it, and I stand with you today to ask the federal government one more time, and we'll do it again tomorrow, because those kinds of atrocities, those crimes against humanity, across the world, whether they occur in China or Iran or Russia and Ukraine now, we see so much atrocity and our country needs to be bold and stand up against it. We have to stand up against it and say, no, this is wrong and Canada doesn't accept it. Yeah. Canada refuses to accept it. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yes, we need to, stand to stick to our standards. Yeah. The standards that brought us to here, standards that made up Canada. Exactly. We can't let go down. We can, this, is, this is our, yeah, I mean, at, at the okay. Absolutely. Uh, my last comment is that I look through this crowd of faces, many of whom I know, many of whom I've come to love and appreciate, and all of you are making our community better. You, you being here makes our community better. Those who would come here and make our community worse or who would bring with them the money from crime or money from the horrors that they perpetrate in their countries are not welcome here. And we thank you all for being here to stand up against us. Thank you, merci. I'm sorry, I came from the Terry Fox run. I would be dressed better. So. Thank you so much. Thank you. Everybody, everyone to the club says, how you come? Fortunately, you are not in Iran, otherwise you will go to the jail. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Salam. This is my daughter, I'm an ambassador to come today because not only is this important for our community, it's important for her to understand the atrocities that happened, the human rights violations that happened. Oh, it's seemingly a faraway place, but a place that's very close and dear to my heart, Iran. 
I'm Adil Gamar. I live just in the building over here. My parents immigrated here in 1987. My mother's a registered nurse and a school teacher who left her home native country of Egypt because she said enough already to silence women. My father is also an immigrant from Libya who was always outspoken against the dictatorship of Gaddafi. He said, the voice of a people will not be silenced. He was jailed, he was accused for many things. They looked across the world for opportunities for them, but mostly for their children, because they did not want their children to live in silence. I know how important today is for this community. Massa is 22 years old. I'm a dad of five girls. Amina is my youngest. And I don't want her to be raised in a world, even if she is under the protection of the Canadian government here, where we value human rights and a woman's right for equality. But I don't want her to be raised in a world where everybody, no matter where you are, at the age of 22, that's too tender. She had her whole life ahead of her. And for a violation of sharing some of her hair, Babe. Yeah. Now, the fight is not over. Massa lives in every one of us. Massa wanted the world to know that we not, cannot be silenced. I thank Mayor Stewart for being here because it's important for politicians to be here. But I cannot stand in front of you here today and say, Mr. Trudeau can do this and Mr. Premier can do this. We can do a lot more in Coquitlam by convening each other like this and saying we're not going to do this anymore. We're not going to be silenced. You, every one of you, has Massa in them. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. She brought us here today. Yeah. 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 Even though I want us all to put the pressure on the mayor, even though I want us to put the pressure on the Premier, even though we need to put the pressure on the Prime Minister to make sure that those that choose Canada to be their home, that they honour human rights, that they honour equality. Exactly. Exactly. But yeah. we're not off the hook because each and every one of us has to advocate. It's too easy for us to look at the Mayor and say, what are you doing? It's hard for us to say, what are we doing? What is the city that we want to have for us now and for the future? Yeah. What makes this city so special is that we're a multicultural, multilingual, multi-generational city that is raising the young generation and we're saying human rights is important to us here. If a woman wants to wear a hijab or not wear a hijab, that's none of your business. That religion has no place in our civic discourse. We have no business in the civic discourse. But a gathering today fills me with hope to hear Mr. Fred Soupy, who we know he's been an advocate with Amnesty International. I know every one of you that has chosen this place to be home is because you know that there is so much hope in this city and in this community. And of course the Iranian community is important. So is the Korean community, so is the Chinese community, so is every immigrant community in this city because together we are actually showing the world what the capacity of a city is to bring people together, to stand up in solidarity. I want to just invite us to have a moment of silence for Massa, this young 22-year-old who had her whole life ahead of her. She did not commit a crime. She inspired her nation. She did nothing wrong. She brought us together. And it's with her hope and her dreams that I wanted to be living in my daughter, in us, in every one of us. And thank you for organizing us here. I got a text last night saying we're getting together, and I said, yes, this is what we need to be doing, not only just for Mazda, but for all of us, to have that hope, that installation of hope, that we can actually create a better city and a better community. I thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Rajin. I'm only 16 years old. I'm an Iranian immigrant. Massa was just a girl like me. She was only 22 years old when she died. Why did she die? For this, I have a serious question. 
And he applied this here. The leader of Iran who ordered all these murder, his grandchildren is living in downtown Vancouver. How can I find peace here? Not only her, but so many children from the head of the government are living here. One of them is in my own school. How can I live here? I came here to find peace. How can I breathe the same air as them? Is this is quality. People die for this, for protesting. When Mr. George Floyd passed away, the whole world was protesting. What about us? Our blood isn't red enough to get the attention people have for others? Just because we're Middle Eastern? <laughs> I came here to find peace, but what is this? This is less than 100. I searched just in Atlantic Avenue. There's more than people, Iranian here. Then it was the charge and the Suri. There was, that was just a concert. But like, there was more than 1,000 people there just singing. But what about this? I'm only 16 years old. 40 years old people, all their mouths are shut. When it comes to us, they're scared. Why, Why are they scared? It was Aban and Abad Hajj when all of them got killed. They started processing, but all of them got killed. They got shot in the head. Kiander Asham, he's not dead yet, but he's going to die soon. He just came out of surgery. Why is no one talking about that? And Hossein Khadami, he was raped by three men. Why is no one talking about that? What we're saying is not only about women, it's not only about NASA, it's not only about the morality police, it's not only about prohibiting goods and all this kind of crap. It's not only about women, it's about the life that we lost. It's about, it's about the child. It's about my childhood. I love my country. I love my language. Don't get me wrong. I love Canada. But why would I immigrate to another country when I have my own country? Back when I was in Iran, I used to cut my hair short. I used to disguise as a guy so they wouldn't arrest me. Once I was being arrested with my brother, because I was with my brother, they called her girlfriend and boyfriend. We had to show certificates that we're not in a relationship to show that we're siblings. When I was studying English, they used to tell us, yeah, guys and girls, they shouldn't shake hands with each other. They shouldn't laugh with each other. What is this? Why is no one talking about this? Why is the world silent? Why is, why is it only us Iranians who are posting Instagram stories, who are tweeting in Twitter? What, what about other nations? If it, if it was another woman in, I don't know, in, in any other country, no one would be silent. When it comes to us, everyone's silent. What's the difference between us and them? I really don't, I, I need an answer. Why? The children of the head of the government are living here. They shouldn't be living here. Yes. My friend's father, he served his military service in Seval. Just only because of that, she's not allowed to come here. But their children are living here? With that faulty money? I don't understand. I need an answer. No one's giving me an answer. I shouted in the streets. They tried to kill us. Why is no one talking about this? Even here in the schools, they teach us about war war, but war war has passed. Why is no one talking about this? Personally, I believe this isn't as important as other things, but no one is talking about it. I don't understand. Maso was literally killed for nothing just because of hair, just because of showing hair. And I know that she's not the only one. Many, many people are in the line of being executed right now, right here, right now that we're talking. They're being executed. And no one knows anything about it because they shut down the internet. They shut down the internet just so the news wouldn't get spread. I, I don't understand. I'm 16. I don't understand so many things.
but I want to understand. I'm 16, I'm here, standing here, right here, right now, talking. I don't think if this is my responsibility, this is your responsibility. Thank you.
تو در سنفی ها و یدبا و دلاغ هایش و کشتی ما در انتظار کاوی دیگر به گل نشسته هزینه می کنیم این گل های باغ خانه هامان را بی هیچ منتی بی هیچ دریافت پاس و خرزنده ای چرا که ما به نزاره نشسته ایم بی هیچ پرداخت هزینه نمیدونم از کجا آواز کنم دوست ما همه چی رو قرار بود من بگم گفتم I think there's a Persian saying as mosque of a mosque it is from us to us it is my fault what is happening it is your fault it is your fault it's everybody's fault because we don't want to pay the price as she was saying for anything there's a price we all know the source of instability in the Middle East we know the source of all of us being here is Republic of Iran, Islamic Republic of Iran. And as Islamic Republic of continues its existence, every single day we will have this happening. Two years ago, they shut down 162 people on the air. They killed them, all of them, one by one. And yesterday they did this. Today they do something else. Tomorrow they're gonna kill another person. This killing will continue, not just here, in Lebanon, in Syria, in Iraq, in everywhere. All of this because of Islamic Republic of Iran. So we need to stand together, not just Iranians. No heart for people. The only thing they care is staying in power. They use and abuse religion to stay in power every single day. But we need to stop this. And this girl, I forgot her name, she was saying why. I'm telling her because of me, because of you, because of you. We didn't stand enough. We need to do more. And what we can do, Mr. Fred said, we can write to MLA, we can write to government, we can be involved, not just write. We can be involved, we can tell them what we want. And also, next time, if you're coming to gathering, you need to bring one more person. If we are 100, next time I want to be 200. Next time be 400, 800, and so forth. And one day we start together and we say, we need to stop you coming and sending your children here, killing our children in Iran and sending your children here. We need to stop this and nobody will stop until me and you and you take a stand. Please, let's start blaming others to say why they don't care, because we don't care. You're saying why for George Floyd the whole world stood? Because the black people in the United States, they went to the street, they said we don't care, black lives matters. Now we say Iranian lives matters. <laughs> There is so much to say. Just one second. For member of the, or, or MP from Ottawa, he has one to send a message. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. For Tri-Cities Community Television, I'm Hussein Adekhi.